let us pray and then we will hear the word of the Lord this morning. But our Father, we thank you. We thank you once again that we can gather together in this place to give thanks, to give worship unto your name. Lord, bless this time as we go through your word. Help us to understand, help us to listen uh, with intention uh, that we may be encouraged, edified, and challenged by your word this morning. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen. 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 If you turn your Bibles with me to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're starting to look at the end, um, and this is the end of the whole of this letter, um, and with that, we see a lot of richness in the truth that Paul is writing about uh, to the brethren in Thessalonica. That for all believers, we see here at the end of Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica, these deep and wonderful truths for us as believers. And for us as believers, it's very practical. That when we look at the practicality, verse 12 and 13, we see here that there's the relationship between you and your elders, or between the sheep and the shepherd, or between the church and the pastors. In verses 14 to 15, you then saw the practical steps or the how you are to deal with one another. Praise the Lord. And even inside the church, you know, we all might put a, a brave face on at many times, but sometimes we slip up, right? You know, sometimes someone might be hurt by some of, you know, short words, or, uh, you know, someone might be weary because their faith is just weak. You know, earlier on this week, I met up with somebody who just, you know, a strong Christian, but they're just weary. They're just tired. Their mind is tired. Their heart is tired. Their spirit is tired. And so we understood from Paul's letter as to how do we encourage each other? How do we forgive each other? Um, and then we saw in verses 16 to 18, and these were the three verses that we focused on over the past few weeks, the end of the year last year, through to the beginning of this year. And this is where we saw that there is a relationship between you as an individual and God. Ah. The great shepherd. So as an individual or the practical steps about as you as a Christian, for you between your relationship between you and God, you are to rejoice always. Uh, you are to pray always or pray without ceasing. 
you are to always give thanks in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So we see that um, Paul's letter at the end of um, Thessalonians is a very practical letter. So in regards to our relationship as believers, we must rejoice always. We must pray without ceasing and in everything give thanks. So eleo no no so for to talo oil it's not a fat to a malona tolu it's a tough for you on a yay le lotto le or le lotto fa a fitai le lana tato va a yay a leva yasoni na te a ne ileva fair na yay o itato malea tua be o be o seata ma na ya now if it our polo or lo o mai e ivain ilevain a lea o lana tusi. But we come to the next uh, four verses, 19 through to 22. We see here that Paul moves into uh, um, some strong words, and they are commands. That there are commands for us as believers to not only consider, but that we must apply. So again, the practicality of the ending of his letter is for the believer. So Remembering the context of the Thessalonian church, and if we think about Paul being very practical, it's because it's a brand new church. So remember, he only spent three Sabbaths there, and um, studies say that he probably only spent just a few months before he was removed from Thessalonica because of the persecution. And so his, therefore, his concern about the believers in Thessalonica was to ensure that they were uh, a strong church, that they had practical tips, tangible tips, so that they are able to apply their faith. And so we see that in the, in the final parts of his letter. So this morning we're going to read verses 19 through to 22. Very short um, verses, um, but it's got some great truths here. Ah, so I'll read verse 19 through to 22 and then I'll ask our Samoan readers to read in Samoan. 19. Do not quench the spirit. 20. Do not despise prophecies. 21. Test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. I'm just going to read that again because it's nice and short. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. See if they tell me if I say more, so fatal, I want to so within these verses, I want to look at three parts where Paul, again, uh, or he gives a command. Uh, so it's not a suggestion, 
It's not, hey, this is a good idea. No, this is something that you must do. Ah. O le ba ena le a o le o le tusi a Paulo o lo o yai ele o se ele o se um ele o se saunu anga po se manatu fa na le a Paulo e tu watu yo autafa a tonu a tau ane ai lo manatu a le ai o le fa tonu nga o le o le tu langa le tau nu yai Paulo ile ba ena mole e kalesia ina iya fa a tonu le kalesia a in a year, yea, I say, Upu, a batu le calesia, in a year, law le auso, or le baena le, it's a tau on a soifu, I let anata Kerisiano. So, the first part that we look at is verse 19, um, and the verse 19 it says, Do not quench the spirit. Do not quench the spirit. Or le baena more, more, awa le tinea le anana, be fe male feta winner, awa tote. Tinea le anana, e tolu ni fa ato nunga o lo ao mai e fa upu e fa, ao le fa ato nunga mo mo, o lo otala no a mai Paulo e winga i le vafu e anga yai o ita ato, ma le anana o le atua. That out of the three commands that is given today, the first command is with regards to the spirit of God. Now the word there that's given in English is to do not, okay? So don't, otherwise, uh, don't do this. And the word that's given there is quench the spirit. The meaning of the word in Greek, um, spainami, spainami. That's the way that you say that Greek word. But the meaning of that word quench in the original Greek is to quench uh, or to extinguish of fire. So the word relates to the extinguishing of fire or something that is on fire. Um, otherwise, to suppress um, or to stifle. The meaning of the word suppress is to prevent the development. The meaning of the word stifle is to make someone unable to breathe. So if you look at and consider all of those definitions, that's what defines do not quench the spirit. Do not extinguish the spirit. Um, uh, tinea a, ile tutonu tu, 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 le fea nga inga fou, o le upu le tinea, e lata lata te le ile ata o le afi. So, o le maa nei o le aumei e Paulo, o le ata o le anganga pa ia ila na fai upu lea, o lo fai mei Paulo, awa nei tinei, awa nei faamate, awa nei um, tinea le, le, le anganga pa ia a. A le upu e, e leni le fao nga inai e maua, ele upu sa moa tinei. E faata tau lea, i le faa pe o se afi. Sa tau maua mai lea le winga o le upu le tinei. O lo maua fai le e feso e ono, fai upu e sfuruma le ono. Le fai mai e le apostolo, awa ina ia tinei u fana fana a le ti apolo. Le fai mai e foi le tu stala e peru suma tasi, fai upu e tolu suma fa, awa ni tinei le afi. Sa o le upu le tinei. E, e, e faa nga ina i le nga gana e leni, i te ni umalava e ye le ata o le hafi. So whenever we see the word quench or the, the word sabainami, uh, sabainami, it's always associated with fire. And it's interesting that Paul uses it in this context um, with regards to the Holy Spirit. So he's saying, do not extinguish the Holy Spirit, which is represented by fire. And we see many parts of the New Testament where it talks about the Holy Spirit and the emblem of the Holy Spirit is fire. So Paul encourages this young church, rejoice forevermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. One of the things that you must do is to do not extinguish the Holy Spirit and its work. E le afionga pa ia le tua mo o e le tangata fa tua tua a fai e fa mau ni a lo tangata fa o laina e fa mau ni a ona ete oli oli le a noa ah e fa mau ni a lo tangata fa o laina a wa ete tatalo le a noa e fa mau ni a lo tangata fa o laina a wa ete fa fitai i me a umalaba a mo fai fai no fa pe a tu le tai a le ne e fa mau ni a lo tangata fa o laina pe a fai ete le ti neia Le anganga pa ia. Pe a fai e te le ti neia le maa lo si anga o le anganga pa ia i lo soifua. Paul already identified that this church 
knew about the Holy Spirit. If you flip back a few pages to 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 6, and Paul says this at the beginning of his letter. He says, And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. So this church was experiencing the Holy Spirit. So in the beginning of the letter, he says, You received the word with so much joy. Then he encourages them by commanding them, Do not quench that Holy Spirit. Do not quench the fire of the Holy Spirit. Ah. Now if I may, I'm a tongue and love a little see a Paulo, I put on on top of more and more. Now my way it at all. Only a car is here late a salon here. Now that's we law the only only the young of a year. For my fair way or no, so also far out of my four year to him at all. Up we are Paulo. I told my lady in a war auto to lear the upu ille poor poor my tele, no no wing on the car is here there. Safa a poor poor maina, be for a sawaina, honor or the tongue of the lay. And for my polo, not totally a male poor poor matele, male only only male and a paia. So the calesia put a husolite salonia, say yaya te la tole and nana or their tour. I find you manato a polo for my. I will have to tinea le nana paia. I will tinea le nana or their tour. Le nawa yate oto. Uso matu fa fine. E o fo yate ita to le tayao le nei. A o e fo lau le sabalino le fa atu atu a. Be le fe me tato ta ita ya. Be luma la lo. Be malosi. Be vai vai. Be fiefia. Be fainata. Awa ne iti neya le ngaluenga ale ngana pa ia. You know, Fala said this morning that, you know, sometimes we've had a really great week. But others might have had a really hard week. But the encouragement and the command of the word of God for us today is to do not quench the spirit. Do not extinguish the spirit. Ah. And let's look at the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, what we know from the word of God is that the Holy Spirit is from the Father. John 15 verse 26. John 15 verse 26. Mo oe le tangata fa atua tua. Ina ua fa aulaina oe, ina ua talitonu wina e lou loto, le le fana ufo wina o lou o langa, ona nofo e leo le angana pa ia ito tonu yate oe le tangata fa atua tua. That when we read in uh, John 15, 26, the words of Christ, he says, but when he, the helper, comes, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. When he, the helper, comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. When you as a believer were born again, when you came to that crossroad and you made the decision for Jesus Christ and you were born again, trust me, brother and sister, in the Lord, that when you came to that knowledge of Christ, you were then indwelt. With the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. Ah. Praise God. You know, Once you believe, you are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. Once you are a believer in Christ. Once you are a genuine believer and you have faith in Jesus Christ. We know from the word that the Father gives us the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lua, the second part we see is that the Holy Spirit was a promise for all believers. So, 
Turn your books to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And here we see the promised Holy Spirit for those who believe. Ole ananga pa iya na foa ina mai ya te itato o e talitonu. So when Paul is talking about do not quench the Holy Spirit, he's talking about the fact that the Holy Spirit indwells the believer. A mau le ngal wenga na mua mua fa upo e valu a maua fa ita fatasi iya. Verse 8 of Acts 1 reads, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And that was a promise that Christ had given his disciples and all those who believed in the pursuing of the of the forthcoming Holy Spirit. When the church was born, the promise was that the Holy Spirit will come. It says there, but you shall receive power. That's another emblem that's connected to the Holy Spirit. It's fire and power. The energy of the believer is because he is indwelt with the Holy Spirit. And Paul is saying today, do not quench the Spirit. Ah. Le ala o tatu i loa, o le nganga pa ia e mai le tama, o le nganga pa ia e whaatu mui na e le tangata whaatua tua. Ah. O le mea, o le fola folanga mō tangata whaatua tua, le whaama mana ina e le nganga pa ia. Le ala fa mei le nga luenga nam tāku mua mua, a e maua e o tou le mana. Pe āwhia i fo le nganga pa ia e lunga i ate o tou, o fola folanga ia, O fola folanga a Yesu ile taimi na a fio a fio a Yesu ile lani a ya fio ifo le nganga pa ia fa na wina le e kalesia e le mana o le nganga pa ia. So we see here that the Holy Spirit that Paul is encouraging the church do not quench the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is from the Father. The Holy Spirit is given as a promise. To the believers. Second, the Holy Spirit is proof of adoption. Ah, so Roma alunum tapwe valu. Romans chapter eight, verse fifteen and sixteen. Ole nanga pa iya fo iya fa ma ni ai o itato o tama fai o itato o fa nau ale atua itato o kase fa alo alo ma walunga lewe ya te itato le tanga te fa atua atua. Ai ole nanga pa iya. E faamau ni ai o oe ole atalii malea fafine aleatua le ngalwenga le ngano pa iya le ngano pa iya le le fa mai paulo awa nei tinea awa nei fa amate le ngano pa iya awa nei fa ape le ngalwenga le ngano pa iya awa nei pele le afi malimumu ole mana ole ngano pa iya ito tomo lo soifua fa atua tua so fa itau mela le romana e valu. Ia, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out. You see that now? We've received the spirit of adoption, whom we cry out, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. That the Spirit of God that Paul is writing to us today and saying, don't quench the Spirit, it's because the Spirit of God is the proof Ah, it proves that we are sons and daughters of the King. Amen? So, ole fe au mo tato ole ne itayao, ina ia e loa ma ia e mauti noa, ole mafu anga e fa atonu ma ia itato ele upo ole atua, ina ia au ane iti neile anga pa ia, 
Ona o i tātou o whānaua le tua. Ona o le anganga pa ia o le mea wa fola folaina. The reason why the Bible is clearly encouraging and uh, challenging and commanding us to do not quench the Spirit is because we, it, it's proof that we are children of God. That our, it proves our adoption. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Amen. So if I ain't allowed to fear so so at Waile Nitao, if it's so so I need low lotto malo mafo fow, onna e a verma fa amalo si au ilo savalinga ole fa atuatua. Praise God. Manamelo na tolu that I want to bring is the Holy Spirit is also our great teacher. The reason why we do not want to quench the Spirit is because the Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us, it reminds us of all the words and the teachings of Christ. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 12 and 13. In the more more coronito, talk with Suma, matak with Lua. Never may fail with Suma, Lua Suma Tolu, Aua, Maue Mato, Ele Oleanga, Ole Nela Lulani, Aoleanga, Maile Tua, in the Ia Mato, we lower mere Ua for what if we're in the Maile Tua Ya Tei Mato. Oya me a foi mato te tautala tu wai i upu e a oa o ina mai e le a nganga pa ia a e le o upu e a oa o ina ai i le poto o tangata o lo o fa a matala ina me a fa a le a nganga i upu fa a le a nganga le isi mafu anga ina ia aua ne iti ne a le a nganga pa ia o na le a nganga pa ia le a oa o ina oi. Ma nei al fai upu le al fai pesuma tolu fa mai o ia me a foi ma tau te tau tala tuai i upu e a o a oina mai e le anganga pa ia la maftanga ma le anganga pa ia i yaso fai so o e mafu ai ona e ona a o a oina lo mafu fau lo lotso lo savali le le fai mai fai umal fai pesuma tolu e le o upu e a o a oina i le poto o tangata. E yele a nga o le poto fa ale tangata ai o le se esenga a a wa o le se esenga o le poto mai le nga nga pa ia o le me a o ina le nga nga pa ia e a o ina i me fa ale nga nga a does that make sense in english when we look at first corinthians chapter 2 paul gives us insight as to another role of the holy spirit and that the holy spirit teaches us and when we look at verse 12 and 13, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. May I suggest this morning, the reason why we do not want to quench the spirit is because the spirit is doing the work of teaching us, reminding us, um, equipping us. Because it says there in verse 12, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. How do we know those things? Through the work of the Holy Spirit. Verse 13, it says, These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You know, sometimes you're like, you know, you're sharing with somebody, and all of a sudden you just hear yourself saying things that you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that I knew all of that stuff. Yes. Yes. You know that that's the work of the Holy Spirit, yes. just working in you. You know, when you're sharing with a friend or a family member, and all of a sudden you just start saying these things. And because if you're not quenching the Spirit, if you're allowing the Holy Spirit to continue to teach you, all of a sudden you are articulating in such a way the goodness of God, the truth of God, the richness of God to someone else. That's why we're encouraged today. That's why we're called today, do not quench the Spirit. Ah. So those are a few things that I just wanted to bring. There's so much more in the, in, the, in, the, in the beauty of the work of the Holy Spirit. But today, I want us to have a look at the reason why we must not quench the Holy Spirit Number one, because we know that the Holy Spirit is from the Father. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's promised to us as believers. Number three, it's, a pr it's proven and it's proof of our adoption into the family of God. Number four, that it's also the Holy Spirit's role is to teach us. 
Amen. Praise God. And I love the ending of that verse 13. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You know, the world will never understand some of the things that you say. They may never be able to comprehend the things of the Lord. But the encouragement for us today is do not quench the spirit. Ah. A question for you today. How am I quenching? How am I extinguishing? How am I stifling? How am I stopping the energy and... Well, the, the fire. The energy is more of like a modern word. Huh? But you know the fire of the Holy Spirit. Because that's a description. And the answer is, it's when you don't have joy. It's when you've stopped praying. It's when you don't give thanks, when you're unthankful. You know, those are those three verses just above these verses, right? If, you, if, you, if, if you're starting to sort of wane on those things, if you're starting to not read your Bible, if you're starting to think, oh, no, nah, I can miss church. I can, you know, I don't really want to hang out with the believers. But those are commands. Ah, the Bible commands us to do not give up the gathering of believers. If those are areas of your life that you're seeing, oh, okay, then I think I've got a few question marks there. That's how we quench the Spirit. If you're not reading your Word, if we're not studying His Word, if we're not meditating on His Word, if, we, if we're struggling to pray, all of those things are real though, right? Let's be real. All of those things are hard. Can you see how the, the, the words of Paul are all connecting together? They're right from that practical part of, okay, how do we honor those in, you know, our elders? How do we continue to work with each other and encourage each other as a church? So all of the all of the truths just before these verses are talking to us about the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. Hey, by angle on a lua. In verse 20 we see the second part of today's sermon. In addition to do not quench the spirit, the second command that we are given um by Paul in verse 20 is do not despise prophecies. And the word despise comes from a Greek word exutheneo. Exutheneo. And exutheneo is a, an accounting term. And the accounting term is to make of no account or to set at naught or to set at zero. In other words, it's the least esteemed. Um, another translation that I, uh, or definition that was given is that you treat something with contempt or you start to mock something. So the meaning of the original Greek word to despise is to think lowly of something. And the something here is prophecies. And the simple way that we can look at the definition of the word prophecies is that it's the word of God. In other words, do not despise, do not treat with contempt, do not uh, esteem lowly the word of God. It's another way we can look at that verse 20. So the second point that Paul gives us as a command today is that do not quench the spirit, do not extinguish the work of the spirit. Two, do not uh, think lowly or do not despise prophecies 
or do not despise the word of God. For many fights are winning for a pelos full. Our letter of Atava, a pair of fetanga. O pair of fetanga ilona fa mani noina, or le upule a pair of fetanga iletusia paulo ya te salonia, or le isi upule a mole upu fola fola. Maile, maile mea moni, ah. E le o pair of fetanga yena ma sanya yona tato fa alomo longo a ilia o awina e totono e kalesia po. O se upu e fai mai ai se tangata ia te oe wana i loa mai le alii le fe au e tawina atu ia te oe. O le pero fe tanga le tawina mai e paulo i le tusi ia te salonia. O le pero fe tanga e fata tau i le folo folo ina o le mea moni o le upu moni. So, aua tatou te tau fa atau va aina le upu aleatua. So sometimes uh, this this specific verse is sometimes misinterpreted to mean something else. Uh, but the, the, the clear definition is so, so when we look at prophecies, people tend to think about First Corinthians twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, and we think about um, the way that Paul had written his letter to that church and trying to uh, create order in amongst chaos of the worship of the church. But the, the simplest way that we can say that this is, does not mean that is because Thessalonians was written a few years before Corinthians. Um, so this is not regarding the same issue. This is purely Paul saying to this brethren, this church, for them to not think lowly of the word of God. Does that make sense? Uh, so ilona fa mala mala maina la mota to le tai ole ni mo ita to le tanga ta fa tu tu e ao ina ma waluma lo va ai a e ao ina e fa ata wa ina le la yo te mana ye ao ma ina mana tu lona lua ya e fa ata wa ina le upo le tu so se te mi folo folo ina ai so se te mi a o o ina ai so se te mi e te fai ta wa ina ai le fionga pa ira le tu ia e fa ata wa ina Lela fa mai Paulo le tai au le nei aua ete ta u fa ata u va aina pero fe tanga aua ete ta u fa ata u va aina le upo le tua that when we consider the second command for us today with regards to pause and encouragement so remember he's using this final part of the letter to encourage this young church so he's given them some bright stuff like rejoice always pray without ceasing and everything give thanks. These next verses, it's a lot stronger. He's using the words, do not. Uh, do not quench the spirit. But in verse 20, he's saying, do not despise. And the meaning of the word uh, despise that we now know is that is to think lowly or to, uh, I like the other definition, to sit at zero, to sit at naught. It means that you've diminished the word of God right down to nothing. And that's pretty hard, right? And he's saying, don't do that. Don't diminish the word of God to mere words on a page. We must open the word of God and say, Lord, speak to me through your word. Yes. These are the very words of God. We know from 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, that all scripture is breathed by God. It's the very breath of God. Not everybody has the chance to hear the teaching of the Word of God. So for us, we must have a high view of the Word of God. For us, we must take on the challenge and not to despise the Word of God. Don't diminish it down to mere words. And these brethren um, at Thessalonica... Receive the word with great joy, we know now. Ah, in Second Thessalonians, uh, first, first Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, 
And this is what uh, Paul wrote uh, with regards to these brethren. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth. Praise the Lord. So this church at Thessalonica received the word, not as Paul's words. When they heard Paul preaching, when they heard Paul exposit the Old Testament, they didn't receive it as Paul's preaching. They received the word as truth. What does that represent? A high view of God's word. But at the end of the letter, he says, don't despise the prophecies. Ah, Don't despise. People at Thessalonica continue to have a high view of God's word. So, Sorry. So this brethren also represents a brethren that received the word of God. Uh, they did not uh, they did not despise the prophecies. They did not despise the word of God. They did not diminish the word of God to mockery, but they had a high view of God. I'm going to give a few reasons as to why we must do so. Le upua le atua. Mua mua, e mawa le Ioane sufitu, fai pesuma fitu. Ona, o le upua le atua, e ma faia le afionga pa ia le atua. Ona faa pa ia ina le tangata. Ah, amen. E ma faia le afionga pa ia le atua. Ona, peso soani ilo soifua, ola faa pa ia ina. Amen. Na mana o mia uma e tatou le mea na. So that's the reason, the first reason I want to propose today or suggest today by God's word is that the reason why we need to have a high view of God's word is because of our sanctification. So let us read what Jesus prayed in John 17, <coughs> verse 17. He prays, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Praise the Lord. That when we read the word of God, that when we have a high view of the word of God, it's a part of our sanctification. It's a part of our everyday sanctification process. The reading of God's word helps us with our sanctification. For me, upo na Jesus fe pesuma fitu ia e fa pa ia ina ila to ila upo moni o lau a fiona o le upo moni lea. Kuso matu fa fine o le mafu angale na o lo au mai e le fa malusi a Paulo. Number two. Number 
Ole lo fa tu no a um na lu na lu spolu e ko tolu su me lu a Ole ne ile o so e o te tu ina tu o to ile tu a male opu olona a lo fa tu no a Ole na te ma faia ona ti ya e ya te o to ma fo a ya tu ya te o to le to fi fa ta si ma ila to u malava e ua fa apa ya ina ole si va aina pole si va aina ole ta ua pe ta ta wai ona fa ta ua ele tanga ta fa tu tu ole upole tu ua ona ole upole tu ua e ati na e ai pe ati ya e ai low fa tu tu ua it builds you up for my le le fa ta win of a pole na for my ya ya paulo ole nele au soi o te tu ina tu o to ile tu ua male upu olona alofa tu no for my la ya ole na te ma faya ona ti ya e ya te o to ma fo a ya tu le to fi fa ta si ma ila to u ma lava he ua fa a pa ya ina so le fi onga pa ya le tu ua e ati ya e ai oi le ngata e fa pa ya ina ai oi ai ma fa fo yo na ati ya e ai oi ah a e mana o se o langa kirisiano e e ola tupu tupu pea e ta tawo na e fa atawa le afiyonga pa ia le atua a wa le afiyonga le atua e ati ya e ai oi na fo le pesa yanga sa a fa itaolo tu pa ia ma tsalo mo si tsai ona e a tupu tupu ha ile a afi ati ya e lo o langa fa le nganga fa ta wa le fionga pa ia le tua awa le ta fa ta wa le fionga pa ia ale tua that when we read there in x 20 verse 32 those of us with uh, king new king james version please if you can read for us uh, verse 32 that will be appreciated 20 verse 32 in english ia yeah. Praise the Lord. We've just talked about the fact that the word of God sanctifies us. But here um Paul is suggesting as well when he's um saying goodbye to the Ephesian elders and he's saying brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. I love that. You know the word of God is the word of God's grace. And that, and that's true. I've heard people say that the Bible is a love letter of God to mankind. And here Paul describes it, you know, I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, and the word of his grace is able to build you up. And so today the reason why we must not despise prophecies, we must not despise the hearing of the teaching and the preaching of God's word is because it's God's word that ha- that builds us up. That helps us grow. That's the challenge for us. Praise God. The challenge for us is to not quench the spirit, but also don't despise, don't have a low view of God's word, have a high view of his word. See it as the most greatest importance in your life to get all of God's word into or as much of God's word into your heart. Praise the Lord. And the final part is that it's the foundation. I just want to uh, point out the reason why we at Peachwood have such an emphasis of God's word is because the, it's the foundation of who we are. In 1 Peter chapter 4 uh, verse 11 reads like this, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom uh, belong the glory and dominion forever and ever amen every time we we preach we talk we lead service we pray here at church it's founded on God's word so first peter 4:11 is an important one for us today if anyone speaks let him speak as the oracles of God where are the oracles of God right here from genesis to revelation There's no special revelation that we have for you. The revelation is the sufficient truth of God's word. 
that when your elders and our brothers teach and speak of God's word, we share with you God's word. We try and impart as much of the truth and the depths of God's word for you. Because that's the foundation of our church. It's in our name. Yeah. Peachwood Bible Church. That's it. We teach the word and the word only. Let's move on to the final point. And the final point today, not only don't quench the spirit, don't despise prophecies, the last point is to test all things. Ah. Ah, I want na on a talia le me fa yatu e si tangata yeti oi. A ia e law on a tofu tofu me uma. That we must not be Christians that um just receive. Hey, so I always challenge our church. Don't just receive what you hear from the pulpit, but test what you hear. You must also be willing to test what the elders have to say. And are we saying things that align? To God's word. And this is a, a beautiful command here. Because Paul says in those last two verses. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. But this starts from this word. Test all things. So if, the, the context. Remember the context is that. Paul is writing to these young believers. They're, they're not even a year old. All of us here are probably older than this church. At the time Paul is writing. But these believers, they've only started believing in like a very short time. So Paul is like giving all of these scattergun encouragement and commands and saying to them, This is how you have to live a life of a Christian. And this final point, test all things. So I imagine them reading the letter and saying, Test all things. Oh, okay then. Ah. Test all things. And I, and I love that challenge, even for myself. You know, how do I test all things? What does that mean? Sometimes we only think about a context of our church. Ah, test what you hear in the Word. Test, test what, you know, Fred has just taught us. But I even took it to the extreme where, how do I test all things against the, the Word of God? How do I test my job? How do I test what I'm hearing in school? How do I test my culture and align it to the word of God. Now, if I may, Paulo, tofo tofo mea uma. Lona winga. Tell you, tell me if I pet at all, tofo tofo a na o mea ye fate tono le kalesia a. I o lo manatu ye le ba inga le fa mai, tofo tofo i mea uma. O le wingo le upu na 
Dokai Matso. On a wing of Putofotofo in the ear a su a sue, in the ear a sa il ili, in the ear a va il ili, me o malava, peo pe laina tutusa, malefina halo le tua, le to tono le tus pa ear. O lola yalo manatu fa pea, okay. A tofotofo au ile mele o tefa a long oi, peo matusa male upo le tua, et a tau. E o fo e to tono la unga luenga. A to fotofo pe tusa malefina nga lo lea tua, e tatao. E o ofo e tutono falea unga, i meo lo o haoa o hinai, fa nao ale e kalesia, e tatao. E o ofo e la tato wanga nuu, e tatao ona to fotofo pe unga tusa malefina nga lo lea tua. And not everybody agrees with that. But I'm standing on the truth of the word because the word says, test all yes. things. Yes. And for us as Pacific, our culture is very, we hold that close to our hearts. Huh? We hold our anganu'u close to our hearts. What I'm saying is that we must hold our anganu'u with our fingertips and then use God's word as a magnifying glass to test it. What parts of our anganu'u is redeemed and what parts of our anganu'u is not. Because those are the things that we need to repent before the Lord and say, Lord, man, we want to bring Samoans, Tongans, Fijians, everyone back to the truth of the word. So the challenge today that Paul is giving us as Christians is how do we test all things? I let off a mate, Paulo. Oil and a matter of a two or two. Tofu tofu mea uma. For me, let's see for a man here. Let's see see a more and more more. You are in top with five people more and more. Malelua. In First John chapter four, verse one and two, I just want to use this as a um, a comparable verse. And John says in his words, "Beloved," he's also writing to believers. Do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. The encouragement of God's word for us as believers, when it comes to testing all things, is that we must understand and decipher and discern the difference between what is false and what is true. And that probably in the context of our nganu'u is probably really true, right? Our tato mana tu natu ili fe upu le mo mo li anim ta pe fa Fa mai upu le fionga pa ia le atua le au pele Au ato te fa alongo ia nganga u malava A ia o tau tofo tofo ia nganga Pe mai le atua ila atou A wae to a tele pe refeta pe pelo O atu ile lalo langi O le alofa lea o le o matou mo o tau Ole alofale wa umo oto. Ina ye loy oto. Me moni a. Ye loy oto on a tofu tofu. Ye loy oil tangata fa tu tu. So se me alaba eti tilo tilo fa alomo pe tautala pe faitau pe mata mata me u malava. I oolo wo langa lo soy fu fa ale nanga. Ile tu langa e ma fa yai ona e fa pia. Okay. Praise God. That the truth of God's word, that as we try and as I try and articulate what God's word is telling us today, that one of the commands that the apostle has given us is that we must test all things. Test all spirits that we hear. Test all of those podcasts that you listen to. Test all of those YouTube videos that you watch. We're in a social media age. Uh, test all of the, your feed. What do those things say? And how do they align to God's will for you as a believer? And for us as a church. Amen? Praise the Lord. Because then it says another two things in those verses. It says, test all things. Hold fast what is good. Praise the Lord. Ah, to for to for me uma tau fi mau ile me le le. Ah, amen. Ole va ina la le ole ole olo soifua a e to for to for 
ime uma o le me le leila o le me e o ngatusa ma le fionga pa ia le tua o me na taofi mau o a atsa po fo linga o me le le ale ma o filipi alu no mta pe fa fa pe valu fa mai le au so o le tsoe pu le nei o me uma wo moni o me uma wo tsa le leia o me uma wo tsonu o me uma wo mama o me uma wo matsa ngo fie ma me u a longo le leia a fai o se isi a mio le lei po se tasi me vi ia ia o to ma natu natu ia lava mea praise the lord so when um when the apostle writes and he says test all things that means test everything and align it to the word of god he then says hold fast don't let go remain ah walk in what in the good things ah he said hold fast what is good question is what are the good things what do those things look like we can give you a response from the word of god philippians 4 verse 8 it reads finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy meditate on these things these are the things that we hold on to but after you tested everything and you said yep these things align to the word of god these things represent things that are noble things that are true things that are just i want to meditate on these things i'm going to hold on to these things so you test everything hold fast what is good but everything else that doesn't align the other verse says abstain from all forms of evil lela fa mela fi onga pa ya le tu to fo to fo me uma ta o fi le me le le ah bu uma u le me le le ai a uma ne to fo to fo me uma ma e lo le me le le e ta ta o na ta o fi o isi ba e nga lo so e fu e le onga tu sa ma le u po le tu fa ma le u po le tu le ta ya le ne ia ma ma o to ma me le anga uma ah me le le ta o fi me le anga uma ta ma ma ah ia ma ma o to le wi nga lo pu na a ma ma ta o fi ah ia ta o fi le fa ati nonga o me le ta ta black and white right so test all things and if all things are good then hold fast to those things the things that are evil so it says there to abstain refrain stop doing something that's the meaning of the word abstain ah uh, to stop doing something to refrain from continuing in that activity psalm 34 says depart from evil Romans 12 verse 9 says abhor what is evil the bible clearly tells us what we as believers must do with regards to what is not of the will of god that's today's challenge ah for you le le fato nunga le na po le lu itao mo itato ile tsaya o le nei na le la wata to ilo e tsao ona tato um yaiva ngo le lo langa po le so fu fa ale nganga e fa ye le tsana tsa fa to to a au mela ya e tsao ona tato fa ye ilo savalinga mo mo pe tsero ona no tsa ko elu just a final verse uh, to finish us off today first peter 2 verse 11 and 12 le au pe le o tsai o ya tsu ya tsu to o tsana tsa este ma ya o mao au mao ia mamao o to matu ina na o latino o meia e tau maleangana ia le leia o to a mio iluma o no ese o le mea la to te fai o puleanga ia te o to peise i o tangata a mio leanga o to la to te va va a ia ia o to a mio le le ona la to vivi ia tu a ile ile a tu a ile aso e a si a si mai ia i pe o le fa ma minga le la apostolo Peteru ina ia tau mamao ita to family upuna tau mamao matu ina nau ole tino and uh, first peter 2 verse 11 and 
uh, Peter says there, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain or refrain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. It's a commandment of God's word that we abstain, that we stop doing those things that after we test and we find out that this thing is aligned to God's word, these things are not, then we abstain from all forms of evil. Praise the Lord. Amen. That brings us to the end of our sermon today. So those four verses gave us some three rich insights into the way we must walk out our faith. Number one, do not quench the Spirit. Ah, consider the work of the Spirit. Consider who the Holy Spirit is. And listen to the commandment. Do not quench the Spirit. Two, do not despise prophecies or do not have a low view or do not, um, it says there, do not uh, treat with contempt or mockery God's word. Have a high view of God's word. And three, test all things. Once you've tested everything against God's word, not against, not against your own thoughts. Ah, because many of us, we test, we test everything, but we test it to what our criteria is. No, the encouragement of God's word is to test all things with God's word. Because once you test it with this objective truth, then you know what is good, hold fast onto it. And what is evil, stay away from it. Ah, abstain from it. Amen. So we need a very a few young people here to tour. My first one, so I need a tour. We love Savalina only for a tour tour. Praise God. Let us be upstanding. Yeah, for today, today, my upole nita talo. Let us pray together. Um, I'll pray. Uh, you just follow through with these words, and we'll pray together. Tato talo. For today, tomorrow. The one I lay, the one I lay, moni, wa o ina yau, na ia fa ama lucia, lo wolanga fa atu atua, au fa atali tali, ina toya fi o mai o Yesu, fa amu moli moli tama, ia be ane upu. Mamma Moni Yatia, Mamma Moni Yatia, Yabea was Tanata, a fai la upu, a fatino la upu, and a year of a long more mafai, a fitai la fala tanga, Lea or Wolai, Lea or Wolai, Foi, Foi, a man alumina. Ya wanga sala. Olevi inga. Olevi inga. Ifoi ya te oi. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is truth. We thank you that your word is sharper than any two edged sword and that it continues to uh, divide um, our hearts, minds, soul, decisions, choices that we make. It, it challenges us in our faith and in our walk. Lord, help us not to be hearers only, but help us to be doers of your word. Lord, for those who are continuing to consider whether or not they, that they put their trust and belief in Jesus Christ, that you would continue to work in their hearts today. So we bless your name for your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Yeah.